Hi, this is a video about the Medicaid buy-in program for working adults with disabilities. Coloradans who have disabilities and receive Social Security Disability Income, or SSDI, may think that SSDI is the only option they have if they want to earn income while also keeping their insurance benefits. Many people with disabilities and our loved ones believe that we cannot work without losing the services and supports that we need. Fortunately, this is not the case, at least not in Colorado. This video is about knowing there are options to receive benefits and earn an income using the Medicaid buy-in for working adults with disabilities. If you receive SSI, but would like to receive Medicaid buy-in, there are ways to make this transition, but it will involve several steps. To determine which benefit is best for you, I suggest that you speak with a benefits counselor. My name is Julie Riskin, and I am a lucky client in the Working Adults with Disabilities Medicaid program in Colorado. Because of this program, I have been able to get out of poverty. In this video, I will share with you how the Colorado Medicaid buy-in program for working adults with disabilities is a great option. I wanna be clear to start with that people can be on this program, the Working Adults with Disabilities program, and they can keep SSDI. You can do both. However, SSDI does limit how much you can earn. If you wanna be able to earn more and keep all of your Medicaid services, including the long-term care services, you can decide to get off of SSDI and stay on Medicaid through this program. This way you can earn much, much more income and receive the medical care and long-term care services that you need. The Working Adults with Disabilities program gives people more financial freedom and stability as well as the opportunity to lead fulfilling professional lives in the industry of our choosing. Disability is very individualized, so there's no one way that will work for all of us. Some people may choose to stay on SSDI and work limited hours, and they can still participate in the Working Adults with Disabilities Medicaid program. This video is for people who have increased earning capacity and are considering getting off SSDI. It was scary for me when I did it, but I'm glad I did. So I'll start with talking about some of the key features of SSDI. If you receive SSDI, payments are generally based on what you paid into the system from your earnings before you became disabled. Some people might be getting SSDI based on your parents' earnings if you became disabled as a child, or you might be getting it based on a widow those payments would be based on the earnings of your spouse if you're a widow. People over a certain age, usually 67, but the age is going up, also get retirement benefits from the same SSDI program. And those factors mean that the recipients have little control over how much their unearned income is going to be. Unearned income is any form of benefit that includes retirement, pensions, unemployment, SSI, SSDI, in other words, income from something other than a job. If you receive SSDI, you are not restricted in terms of what financial assets you can have, but you are very limited in how much money you can earn in addition to the money you receive from SSDI. SSDI also uses a disability determination system that is very focused on what work you cannot do based on your disability. This process is long and can be very demoralizing and it often scares people with disabilities into not even trying to work. People often fear redeterminations. Getting away from this is another great reason to look at using Working Adults with Disabilities Medicaid program and getting off of SSDI. Unlike SSDI, when the state determines a person's disability for this particular Medicaid program, they do not disqualify individuals who work. To qualify for the Working Adults with Disabilities program, you must have a disability that is either determined by Social Security Administration or by the state disability determination system. For the disability determination, it's important to know that while the questions are the same as those asked by Social Security, the process is much better. First of all, they don't hold work against you at all. Second of all, the process is much faster, 90 days at the very most, but usually even a lot faster than that. If you're on SSDI at the time of application, you don't have to undergo a disability determination. 
If you're over 65 at the time of application, or if you get off of SSDI, you will need to do a disability determination. The Colorado Cross Disability Coalition can answer questions about disability determination, and any benefits planner should also be able to help you. You also have to have a job. This can be any job. It need not be full-time, and it can include self-employment. And finally, you have to meet the income guidelines. When you're on Working Adults with Disabilities, there are no restrictions to the financial assets you can have. However, the guidelines, unlike SSDI, are quite generous for how much income we can earn. They count unearned income dollar for dollar, but do not count about 50% of your earned income. If all of your income is earned, you can earn about $120,000 a year in 2023. If you have a high amount of unearned income, that will limit how much you can earn, but it's still worth it in most cases. There are other resources to explain what all of these mean, and they're in the links with the document that's attached to this video. Remember, you don't have to give up SSDI to get on the Working Adults with Disabilities Medicaid program. You can keep both. And then if you find you're able to earn more than you get from SSDI, you can explore getting off of SSDI at that time. Now, some earned income on SSDI can be disregarded, and we suggest you see a benefits counselor to determine if any of your income can be disregarded, as it can be confusing. If you're on SSDI, as soon as you're working, you need to report your income to Social Security each month. You'll have a nine-month trial work period, but you may have used it already. That's when you can earn any amount of money and it won't count against your Social Security. After you pass the nine-month trial work period, you get a final three months of benefits and then you're taken off of SSDI. If you're getting close to the nine month trial work period, please contact your eligibility site and ask for a disability determination application to be sent to you. To avoid stress, you wanna get this done sooner rather than later. If you wait till they kick you off or till you're done with the nine month trial work period, you're gonna get a scary letter saying that you no longer have Medicaid because you don't have a disability. Now, you can appeal that decision and they have to continue benefits during the appeal because they're supposed to send you that form before they take you off anything. But we find it easier to just be proactive and avoid the stress. If you do have to appeal and you need help, contact the Colorado Cross Disability Coalition or Colorado Legal Services. If you leave SSDI and find that working at this level is too much, there are fairly easy ways to get back on benefits in the first five years. You'll also keep your Medicare for about seven years after you lose your Social Security. While the letters they send can be scary and you have to deal with reporting income and making sure to avoid any overpayment, not being poor and having enough money to make ends meet is really great. It's also nice to be able to accept raises without having to worry if that's going to cause you to lose half of your income. It's a really big decision and a personal decision. Again, we cannot emphasize how important it is that you talk to a benefits counselor or benefits planner. They can help you make the best decision for you. Just make sure that they put in writing anything they tell you about what you can and can't do. Thank you.